recording, recording sound, sound. How's your sound? You got right. everything? It's wor- I'm working, baby. <laughs> right. I've got to ask you, would you mind doing, when you do like number five, right? Could you look to camera and do it? Yeah, sure. Go number five. Because what I'll do, I'll put like, yeah. I'll do like some sound echo or something. Like, I'm always afraid of the tooth thing. My British people get all upset. <laughs> yeah, don't which is do the right that. way to which is the right way to do it? Like this. Like this. Yeah, because that's up yours. That's up yours. This is okay. Yeah. So knuckles yeah, to v- me is good. Yeah. There's a really interesting story behind that actually. Uh, people have told me something to do with Churchill, right? Yeah, but even it goes even back to the Battle of Agincourt in um I, uh, king, which king was it? King Henry V. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you quickly because it's a really cool story. Um, the, 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 oh, the so British... they do the archers pulling back yeah. their bows, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they yeah. they used to cut when they captured the archers, they cut them off, and then of course they would do this right. before battle to taunt them. You get these two fingers. Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today we are joined once again by Mark from Long Island Watch. How are you, sir? I am doing well still. How are you? Good, (laughs) good. I'm okay, tired, working hard, working hard. Yes, working hard or hardly working, as my father used to say. (laughs) Yeah, tell me about it. Um, And I haven't even had time to do YouTube videos, so that's how uh, busy I've been. But hopefully this will make up for it. There you go. Now, if you're not familiar with Mark, I do urge you to subscribe to his channel uh, if you haven't already, which will be completely insane of you. I'll leave a link down below. Also, I see on the Instagram counter. I was wondering, you, do you, I don't remember what it was last time. It was, it was teetering on 40, uh, 39. Oh. Oh, it was nice, about to. Nice. So we have, yeah. we have tipped the battle. <laughs> nice. nice. So we're getting closer to a seven digit counter. <laughs> Good, good. We'll, we'll try and get you there. Thank you. Um, right, so today we're going to do um, top 10 divers under $500. And this is... Um, top five divers. Yeah, no, sorry, five each. Yo, so, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, you scared me there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I did this back in 2016 which is like one of the very early video. And obviously the market has changed dramatically since then. So I thought, why not do an update with somebody that uh, is, is well, more knowledgeable than me, especially when it comes to this particular price bracket. Yeah. And we should explain descending order. I'm, I'm putting my number one is the, the one I love the most or recommend the most, or I think it offers the best all round. Um, and you're going to do the same. I'm well, going to do the same. Yes. Yes, I will. Yeah. Right. So would you like to go first? Oh, as guest, I can go first. Yeah, of course. Oh, wristwatch check. Jesus. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. You can go no. first. You go first. I'm wearing this. I don't know if you could see that. Oh, I do. Uh, I, I just reviewed it. The video should be up by the time. The, uh, well, I'm getting confused now. The video for this right. review will be up before this video we're recording now got it so this is the new fortis flieger uh reinvented nice. for the 21st century it is it's insane this is the one actually actually um i just realized the crown is undone it fits it's, you nice what size is it yeah this is the 39 nice it's the watch that i think in episode five or four i can't remember which one it was it was my top release of 2020 ah, 20 that was yeah. uh two videos ago last video was two. pet peeves right yeah yeah pet peeves so oh, and guys check that video out so i'll leave a link up there uh, if you missed it um yeah it's uh, i'm i don't want to send it back i have to say I'm, I'm probably gonna have to buy it now so. right right yeah anyway what, what are you wearing uh, so i'm doing two of course so i'll show nice. you first I'm wearing my Islander Ooh. with a with the uh, wave dial. Very nice. So it's really cool. I love it. Um, clean, um, no numbers on the dial, no no windows cut. 
Uh, awesome. Right. Really nice. 42 millimeter, good heft to it. The whole mm. wave lights up when the lights go down. Really is cool. Is that a personal mod or is that something no, this you're is one of the. this is actually one of the Islanders I sell. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. So, and then this is close to, I think you reviewed the Squale Sub 39. Yeah, um, not I, I haven't seen that one though. So this is, I had them make this for the US market. This is called the Montauk. It's a 38 millimeter Swiss diver. Uh, it probably it would have made today's countdown, except it escapes the price bracket by about a hundred uh, by about a hundred bucks. But um, oh, really? Super comfortable. Um, thirty eight mils, just awesome. Thirty eight. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And, and uh, I presume Montauk is uh, obviously in Long Island. Out east. Uh, I might be pointing yeah. the wrong way, but yeah. <laughs> that's a that very is fitting. That perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's it that's well. a really nice design it's, i love that. it's nice it's i i dig it it looks really good it's a good one yeah. to watch so that's us only us only yeah right nice i had no idea they even came out with that that's pretty yeah. cool yeah it was kind of behind the scenes thing i was doing with them since i guess well easily last year but beginning of last year and Very just kind cool. of working on it you know nice, since then and nice. finally it came to fruition just before the holidays beautiful and i have to say uh, it's become something of a tradition but uh uh, well, you're not wearing a, a t-shirt today. No, but I'm we still wearing do a sweatshirt. Check. Oh, it's <laughs> actually it's Lake George. Nice. Which I don't know. You were you were a New Yorker for a little while. You know where that is? Right, right. <laughs> Vaguely, yeah, roughly. <laughs> it's about an hour north of Albany. Uh, it's a right. lake town, resort town, and we went there. I've been there before, but we went there back in uh, August because it was one of. The very few places you could visit and not have to quarantine or anything else because you never physically left the state. Um, so nice. went there back in August. I had fun. Bought a, I usually buy a coffee mug <laughs> or a shirt. Very nice. So very nice. It was a shirt this time. I'm 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 feeling particularly inspired by you. So I'm also wearing a, a more cash. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> let's get back to watches. <laughs> oh sure sure sure. Okay, so uh, my number five choice, which this would be again descending order. So, not that any of them are bad, and I guess I should preface the whole conversation by saying, like you said in the beginning, this is like my area of expertise. Mm, um, so, I, I will much. be, in full disclosure, for the watches I do sell. Right. Um, because, you know, this is what I go after. Affordable, mm. great watches, and divers are the number one genre of men's watches sold. Um, right. So, everybody has to have a say go. So, my number, number five, five choice is the uh, Seiko Solar Paddy Diver, which is uh, mm. SNE uh, 549. Used to be 435. For some reason, they changed the ticket to uh, the part number to SNE 549. Lord knows why. Uh, 300 bucks. So it's solar. So it's grab-and-go mm. quartz, right? Uh, mm. Blue dial, which I love. Yeah, 44 yeah, millimeter. Okay. 200 meters of water resistant. It is... Uh, an ISO 6425 rated diver, which not every single one I'm going to cover is actually, actually only two of them on the list are ISO divers, so true divers. Right. Um, and it's solar, so it's got Seiko's V157 movement, which means you wear it for a day or two, it gets a lot of sunlight or office light, fully charged, goes 10 months in the darkness without needing, Damn. you know, any more sun. So. Mm. I thought that that was just a great way to start. And in my opinion, if you're going to go quartz, solar is just awesome because nothing like taking the watch out of the watch box and it's dead. Mm. You know, and then mm. you got to change the battery or whatever. So at least with solar, you're almost limitless with uh, where you can go and uh, what you can do. What was the size on that? 44. So it is. 44. And what's actually funny about it, it's 44, but it actually sports a 20 millimeter lug. Um, so. That's interesting. Slight bit, a slight bit dispropor disproportionate, um, mm. but it still looks great. Like I said, it's got the beautiful blue dial, um, the whole grab and go mentality that I really dig. Um, the only the bad part about it that I'll say is that I guess it just wasn't a popular enough case style that nobody made aftermarket integrated bracelets for it. So if you right. want to up the bracelet, you got to go with a straight end link, nothing with a nice curved end link that'll knock it in. It came out, I want to say, about four years ago or so. They did this and the 441, which is a PVD version, but a non-patty version uh, on a black rubber strap. But this thing is, uh, like I said, it's cool looking. It looks really nice. 
Yeah, it is cool looking. I, I, I really like the... Uh, I notice on a lot of the solar, they do the, the little red thing on the crown. Is there yes. any, is the there red, any the, relation? Or? The stripe? Yeah, What's what What does that mean? It's like a patty thing. It's uh, So you know if the crown is out or in. You see where the red stripe is falling in line with the crown guards. Oh, fantastic. I've always wondered that. Yeah. Now I know. that. Yeah, that's... it's like a quick reference. So as a diver, you know, hey, you look at it and you go, oh, crap, my crown is popped. Like you right, just said before right. on the Fortis, mm. your crown was popped. So there's mm. usually some kind of, it's like, a, it's like a witness line. Very cool indeed. Very yes. cool. Um, is the dial like, is it? sunburst or it's sunburst hey, what's amazing about it is that if you think about it, it's a solar watch so there's got to be a cell somewhere to accumulate the sunlight right yeah uh it's sunburst but it's semi-transparent because it's got to let the light through to charge it and they did a you know seiko and citizen they do a really nice job with solar watch now these solar watches i'd say used to be ugly um but now they i guess with materials and stuff they can do a you know cooler things than they could do 20 or 30 years ago such mm. that i would say you would never know that that was a solar watch you can't tell by looking at it yeah that's what i thought i always presumed it was automatic that's yeah. cool do you remember those early seikos that they couldn't hide the solar no not at all you couldn't they, they couldn't hide the cell yeah so they yeah. had this ugly like yeah you know the bar, like, like a calculator <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, right. Well, I'll, I'm going to go in with my number five. Five. Number, number five. five. There we go. <laughs> I'll do it with more vim and vigor next yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. It's a Dan Henry. It's the 1970. Okay. It looks like um, a compressor, but it, it's not. It's just two two crowns, crowns one mm -hmm. for the internal bezel um and you can get it in a, a, a different sizes it's 40 millimeters 44 date no date yeah and there's a whole plethora of beautiful colors very lively very and as the, the name suggests it's uh, inspired by watches of that era right um stylistically now dan is uh, and it's funny i just spoke to him yesterday um he he's a uh, we, we've talked about him yes, before. Absolutely. You, you know Dan. Yeah, so, watch collector, big time. Yeah, uh, I. But I didn't know that how many watches he actually owned. Yes, he's got so a website he, where he catalogs them and stuff. Uh, uh, One thousand five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> 1,500 watches. It's a lot of watches. Just, just think about how many watches that is. That's yeah, ridiculous. It's a lot of watches. So he has Timeline Watch, which he made this right. beautiful, uh, so useful. If if you want to learn about watches, it's a great overview because you got you, you, you go in chronological order and you swipe and then all the watches of that year come up. Um, and that's kind of kind of was the the genesis of his watch line, and I think he st he started in when was it 2016, mm -hmm. um, and he came out with this was one of his early releases. Oh, right. He goes by year. It was almost like the timeline watch kind of sparked this idea for him. Right. And so he'll take like traits from popular divers of that year, and then. You know, it's an amalgamation of all these inspirations. So his timeline website existed before the brand came into existence. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, so it it, it kind of like inspired. Springboarded the, them. Sure. Yeah, it's two hundred and ninety dollars, right? Mm. Limited edition, automatic. Right. It's the NH thirty five. So mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it's a it's a good. You know the the this movement, solid Seiko sure, movement. Sure, absolutely. Um, 200 meters was resistant and i just think for that money the choice you get right I, um, and the, the styling and everything else yeah how it looks the whole pack it's everything the complete pack it's everything it's right. everything and he does such a good job you know I, I i i love the playful colors as well you know actually there's a blue one i think you'd like with a with a blue <laughs> always loving a, the blue yeah with a in a blue rotating bezel anyway so that's my number five what, okay. what is your number four my number, number four, four. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <get> better? Number <laughs> four. Yeah, uh, I'm going with the, a brand I don't carry. Uh, a brand I've tried to carry in the past, uh, Zelos. Uh, Zelos, right. uh, the black tip, which is black it tip. just sneaks in at four ninety nine. And what I love nice. that it brings to the party is a Miyota ninety fifteen movement. So just in general, it's a forty one millimeter diver, uh, two hundred meters water resistant. Um, but it's just got everything that a diver should, you know, sapphire crystal, uh, ceramic or a sapphire uh, bezel insert. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
a beautiful textured textured dial like a sand dial wow i'm looking at them now i'm i'm i don't know this brand whatsoever and this it looks kind of like a zodiac yeah in a, in a way because i actually tried to get a zodiac to throw in here and i just couldn't i just couldn't get the price down yeah yeah because <laughs> uh, i dig those too but uh, like I said, what I dig is a, it, the 9015 is like the more people I talk to mm. that are in industry, not, you know, not in the YouTube or blogging industry, but are actually watchmakers, assemblers, mm. manufacturing. Yeah. The, more and more of them are putting the 9015 over the Eta, over the Salita. Um, so it's the Miyota movement, uh, 20,800 beats per hour. It's actually finished relatively well it's not an ugly movement on its own and it's it's relatively thin mm. um so i thought this was kind of more like um this would be the i say yeah probably except my number one my number one's amazing i feel um but oh i'm intrigued really now. yeah uh, <laughs> i mean look if, <laughs> I if this is know. number if this is number four and your number yeah we well, you know it is i'm also i'm also you know I'm looking at value too. Right. So, you know, at four ninety nine, it's the most expensive one I'm gonna show you. Uh -huh. But I feel like, you know, in, in, in a brand name, it's a twelve hundred dollar watch. Um, but here, four ninety nine, comfortable size, great dial variations. Yeah. Uh, uh, they put loom on the crown, which oh, I, I see is so that. Nifty. I see that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so kinda again, it just it ties it all up, brings it home, a little more of a higher end and uh, Oh my God! There's a hey, four ninety nine. There's you know, a GMT gonna, that with a blue dial that just looks. They got a lot killer. of watches. Yeah, I I do not know this brand. So I presume it's yeah. like a micro brand. It's a you know what does micro mean? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> um, is there a certain manufacturing quantity per year? But I, I would say it's a micro brand. Yeah. Um, the stuff is usually sold out whenever you try to get it. Um, I tried to become a retailer and they said, ah, you know. Not right now because we can't even keep the stuff in stock as it is, which is an excellent problem to have. Yeah. Um, but obviously, I think they're doing a great job. Uh, a lot of people, there's a lot of buzz in the underground about them. You know, you know, great watches, great movements, great assembly. So I picked up an offshoot brand of theirs, which is called Axios, a bunch of months ago. Not quite as nice as these, but still, you know, offers a lot of punch. Where are they from? Sing. I want to say he's based in Singapore. I want to say right. the owner. I want yeah. and do you know anything? I, I want to know what the name means. Oh, black tip. No, uh, uh, black tip. Oh, oh, Zelos. Yeah, Zelos. Black tip, I, I presume, is the shark, right? Some kind of a shark, yeah. right? A fish. Um, I actually don't know where the name comes from. That is an excellent question. It sounds vaguely Greek, like mythology. I wonder if there's there's because there's so like many. One my, like one of my other choices. <laughs> oh, okay, interesting, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have to investigate this brand. I, I'm I'm not familiar with them. Oh my god! Oh, you'd love it. There's some of their dials is just ridiculous. It's right. It's great dial work. Um, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of design care that goes into it. That yeah. they put together an amazing package. That is that is the one thing I do like uh, uh, or appreciate about micro brands is that you do feel the passion i think there's uh absolutely there's only one micro brand no two because dan henry but there's another micro brand coming but the, the the downside is there's also a lot of derivative kind of right you know samey samey designs sure. and sure i would actually hesitate to say even dan henry's a micro brand i w i'm not sure about that yeah i i'm pretty sure he's popping pretty big production numbers yeah <laughs> so it may not be in macy's but you know which is you know you don't want to be there anyway they're going to the business but you know right yeah, <laughs> I feel of course, like, yeah you know a lot of these guys are you know producing more and more and w when do you stop becoming a micro and like people have asked me all the time is the islander a micro brand i'm like i don't does it matter yeah <laughs> i don't know it's, i have it, no idea it goes back to a bit like in our pet peeves video people love to put things in boxes and when you don't Cor exactly yeah. yeah and when you yeah. don't fit in a box people are like what what Oh, I don't know what it is. I can't figure it out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, is it a dog or is it a cat? Let's ask the audience, what defines a micro brand? Do we even care? Yeah. <laughs> Just <say that. laughs> add your comment down below. Um, sure. That, yeah, that will be that will be the cold open for the show, I think. Um, <laughs> right, so... Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay, this is really going to upset some people. But um, I had to... I, I, and this is what you were saying... Uh, when you take into consideration value, 
I think yeah. I, I'm putting in Steinhardt. Um, it's fine. I'm going to nominate. Um, <laughs> is that is that the correct use of the word? I don't well, know. you're not nominating. They won the award. They won the award, and the winner <laughs> is at fourth position. Um, the Ocean Vintage Thirty Nine. And you didn't do your, you didn't do. Oh, sorry. Number, number four. four. Number <laughs> four. It's a no date. Um, mm? Obviously based on the uh, uh, the the famous subs. Now, where it gets sure. contentious is that they do a lot of homage watches, and um, yes, I, I have no issue with homage watches. In fact, I did a video, I think ten reasons you should not buy a, a, a homage. People saw the title, got really confused. Thought, oh, he's anti homage now. No, but I went oh, yeah, through yeah. ten reasons and basically just discredited all of them because there's no logic. Right. Oh, you got know, it. You know, so right. that was the anyway. The flipping. Exactly. So I, I don't, I don't care what people buy as long as it's not a, 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 a replica or a fake, right. right? Or a Franken watch. But the thing is, they do original designs as well. Yes, they and they're do. great. They do, um, they but do. they off, also offer this. And why it's good value is because look, unless you got ducktails swimming in cash money, you're, you're not going to. I have a shirt with that. You, I bet you do. <laughs> 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 right, I've got to get one. <laughs> I gotta get one. I'm off to eBay after this. I actually have a Scrooge McDuck watch. Do with you? Him counting the gold. Oh, yes, I do. My, I want that. I want. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, yeah. Let Limited me review it. Can, Disney store. Can I borrow of it? Of course. To review. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, so. <sighs> I totally lost my train of thought. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you were talking about homage, uh, the 39 mil sub. Yeah, um, it, it, right. So so back in the day, they didn't do the 39 mil, millimeter size. I've bought one. They're exquisitely made, incredible um, uh, quality. Um, yeah. And I just think they're, they're 499 roughly there. Yes. Now they have this 39 millimeter. I, I, I actually bought... Uh, one of these and then I re I sold it on because I, I was going to buy it to review for the channel mm -hmm. but then I just didn't have time and I, I cancelled it and, and blah 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 uh, but I and I should mention this point that every watch I'm talking about today and it goes for you as well I have handled and oh, yeah. I know I, I've you know I've experienced and that is why I recommend it um, because I I see these re reviews popping up in my recommendations on, on YouTube. And I click on it. Oh, oh I want to see that reviewed. And then it's just a person talking about it from afar. I was actually just going to say, I bet you it's somebody and they show you a picture. Yeah. So how are you <laughs> yeah. going to review how the How the watch? hell do you review a watch that you've never seen before? Yeah. They've never held in your hand. Yeah. yeah. I get like a reaction video, right? I totally get that. Oh, that sure. looks interesting. Am I right. interested? What I like about it, what I don't. Right. But to recommend. Like people, you know, reviewing the new Rolex before it even hit the store. How can you review it? Well, you that's just. You not your hand yet. Yeah, that's just clickbait <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Oh, of course. Mm. Right. Sorry. Another tangent. Um, Stein. No, that's okay. Steinhardt. They're great. ETA. Uh, what more could you want? Um, who cares what other people think? It's a brand that I would love to carry. Um, they, I've approached them, I would say yearly for the last six years or so. Mm. Um, you know, many years ago, they launched an offshoot brand called, uh, De Balfrey in the, um, it was a kind of like a pilot style watch. Um, I believe that brand kind of disintegrated. Um, but from what I'm told, there is a Steinhardt trademark conflict of interest in the United States of America. That is why you will not find a Steinhardt dealer in the USA. Ah, right. Interesting. Yeah. So you, even if you if if you could, you just can't. Basically, you can't. That's why if you want to buy one in the USA, I don't think I'm giving false information. You have to either go. Well, I'm not going to tell you who the competitor is. Right. <laughs> but you have to. You can buy direct. You can buy direct from the factory. Yeah. You know, or mm. direct from wherever they are in, in Switzerland or Germany or whatever. And they are German, uh, and but they are Swiss made. I should point that right. out. Yeah. Interesting thing, uh, Gunther Steinhardt, he, he was a architect. Uh, he studied architecture and engineering mm -hmm. uh, and founded the brand in 2001. And it's, that's definitely not a micro brand, though. It's, no. They're, they're, no. They're big now. And, they're big. Yeah. They're big. And not, and not at that price point. That's a tough tough to be a micro brand at that price price point yeah and they're selling and they're definitely selling value and i've seen pictures of their staff i mean they it's not like yeah. just 
It's a company. Yeah, it's a company. It's a proper. That's definitely not a micro brand when you've got like staff. Staff. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. On on the brand themselves, you know, you say, oh, they're you know they do homage. They do do homage, but they also do their own stuff. And I feel that much like the Islander brand, the homage stuff funds the other stuff. Yes. And yeah. I, I'd say that's kind of you know that's the business model. You know, sell the stuff that sells, and then use it to you know kind of create something new. It's a bit like, dare I even mention? Oh, I just noticed it's snowing outside. It was well, oh well, no, but you're west of me. It was snowing pretty bad here this morning, actually. Right. Oh, we've got your snow then. Yeah. No, but you're. How could that possibly? <laughs> it's, not going, it's not going east to west. Maybe it's going to snow here another hour or so. Right. <laughs> Anyway, yes, sorry. Yes, um, right. Uh, uh, weather chat with Mark and TGV. Yeah. Um, Last time we did food, yeah. Food so. chat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> food chat. That was fun. Number three. So I'm going back to a quartz, and I'm going at $119. Oh, wow. This is the Phoebe, uh, yeah, the Phoebus. Uh, Phoebus. Phoebus. P-H-O-I-B-O-S. So this is definitely Greek. Uh... It's a Greek, yeah, it's a Greek, it's a Greek name. They have uh, their, their logo, which is possibly the most complaint about logo I get other than my own, is some kind of big octopus. The god, <laughs> right, the god of light. Yeah, I'm choosing the Phoebus PX002. B or C doesn't matter, one's a blue dial, one's a black dial. And why I feel this belongs is I started carrying the brand, it's probably under two years ago, year and oh, almost two years, probably a year and a half, year and three quarters. Right. And I got them in and I got all the automatics and somebody I rely on for a lot of opinions on what I bring in said, hey, just try their quartz. You know, I realize it's inexpensive, but you know, their automatics are great, two, three, four hundred, but try the quartz. I think they're gonna sell. Mm. The quartz outsold everything. Really? Like that. So it's a Ronda 515 movement. So it's a Swiss movement. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's made in China, the watch. It's a Ronda 515 movement, it's 42 millimeters, but it's got a sapphire crystal. Right. Aluminum insert, yeah. The loom is decent, 200 meters of water resistance, a nice bracelet. Nice solid link bracelet, yeah. $119. $119. That's crazy. And it is crazy. Yeah. And the construction is great. The second hand registration is good. Um, the overall quality of the watch is excellent. It looks beautiful. And just again, like I said, the solar pad in the beginning, for knock around quartz, this thing is amazing. Yeah, the battery will go dead in a couple of years and they have to replace it. Yeah. Um, but man, is this a watch that you don't mind wearing and scratching up or busting up or whatever? It's just, it's so inexpensive and it offers so much. So, yeah, this is another brand I don't have no experience with, but yeah, I know. How is the quality? Welcome to my world. <laughs> As a brand, they're excellent. Their automatics use either the NH35 mm -hmm. or they'll use the Miyota 9015. Um, like Zellos, they can get a 9015 into a watch for under 500 bucks into a dive watch with you know, full sapphire, ceramic, mm. uh, screwed links, all the other good stuff. Um, but yeah, quality, excellent. Like I said, you know, I, I don't keep selling a brand if it's got issues. So this is one of the brands that continually hits home. Nice people. Um, you know, I actually am waiting for an order to come in from them right now. Uh, continually, continual, continual great sellers. I, I see what you mean about the uh, the logo, though. Yeah. Yeah, I totally <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, it's polarizing. It reminds me of Hydra, you know. The, people say Hail Hydra. Yeah. When they see it. yeah, I know, I know. You're not alone. So there you go. You've never seen it before. And now you know. That's ex you, Your sentiment is exactly what people say. <laughs> uh, a cool choice. And this is why it's better doing this list with you. Because if it's just, you know, it, the, the, the gift and the curse of, of talking about only watches you've experienced is obviously yeah. you can't experience every single brand right. and watch and like i wouldn't right. i wouldn't know about this and i doubt i'd ever review it because it's not well, i might do i might do i i might do let's <laughs> let's see where it goes um cool choice i really like that yeah no i like i said i dig them i n no qualms about them mm. 
And they got engraved the octopus on the back is pretty cool. On the back, yeah, actually, you can, it, it's really done. It's 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 done very deep. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a deep engraving. Yeah, I like that. Debossing, it looks great. It reminds me actually that the Dan Henry uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, very right. co- very cool. Right. Uh, so where where are we? At? Um, number three. Uh, your number three. Okay, okay. Number, number three. three. Number, number three. three. Okay. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing the echo because I'm going to put the echo in. So I don't know why I'm going. <laughs> it's like, a good point. I sh- if I yeah, just, exactly. What am I doing? Laurier. So oh, nice. the the Neptune. Um, oh, definitely. In their third generation, the, 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 this is definitely a micro brand, um, uh, husband and wife team. I got into Laurier with the first gen, and and it just absolutely blew me away. I, I found it refreshing and beautiful amalgam- uh, amalgamation of styles. It's a kind of confluence of right. you got the uh, Amiga uh, CK14755, you got the Blank Pan Bathscape. MC4, you got the Rolex right. 6538 Submariner, the Doctor No Watch, of course, all jumbled up. We were talking about homages. Yes. And and to me, I think this is the best way if you don't want to get a direct homage. It's a, it's a, an ode to an entire era of right. 60s divers, you know. And it's right, just, got it. It absolutely works. Um, a little bit from everybody. Yeah, and they've really finessed. I mean, I'm considering getting a third generation, but I... I I like my first gen because sometimes the imperfections are what make makes it charming. And mm-hmm. uh, mine came with the, the, the Seiko, I think the NH35. I can't remember, but now they've they've upgraded them with the Miyota 90S5. Is it? Well, I don't know. Is, is that a real movement? I, it doesn't I don't sound know. familiar. I know the I know the 9015 and all its variants. I all, all I know about it is it's it's got the higher. Uh, frequency of 28 yep yeah 28,800 that's it yeah yep. so uh, that kind of tickles my fancy but buying right. the same watch I mean they made it thinner as well the movements allowed right, it to the be thinner. thinner right yeah which is I think I mean that sounds very compelling to me yes um, amazing bracelet I'm surprised you don't carry them you know I've met them a couple of times the two of them I guess I just yeah. never kind of pulled the trigger maybe yeah after shout out well. to lorenzo and lauren by the way L- lovely people really new yorkers living in new york um so great brand really great brand yeah i dig it yeah i know uh, I've, I, I've held them you say because you can you've held them i've held them yeah. several times and exude quality i've got to wear mine a bit more i think um anyway right yeah. over to you number two okay so number two my okay i I got my fingers the right way. Yeah. Because it's come up on my channel too as well. Cause I oh, do, God. You, did you do the f- I thing, have, two fingers I up? I don't want to your... do it on your channel because you're... <laughs> no, go for it. Because of your upbringing. No, no, no. No, no. D- do it and I'll, put, I'll censor it out. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate the history lesson on what, this, on what the bad one means. Uh, right. Anyway, so I am going to my own brand now. Um, the Islander. I'm gonna go with the. You might have to look this one up. The ISL 18, ASL which is yeah, right. ISL 18, and this is the Yacht Master inspired Islander. Uh, beautiful blue sunburst style, applied indices, dome sapphire crystal, uh, embossed ceramic bezel insert. Ah, uh, wow. You know, okay. Seiko NH 36 movement day date. Uh, solid bracelet, solid link, solid end links, screws. Uh, it's got yeah. everything. It's got everything it should have. Um, and did I cover everything? I think I did. Yeah. And, you know, it's 329 And I picked it here simply because it's probably going to wind up being the number one selling Islander. Ah, okay. This one. This one, right? Yeah. That's oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see what you mean. It's very yacht masterish. Oh my god, look at that dial. The dial is beautiful. The loom is fantastic. I mean, obviously it's my own brand, so I'm going to say it's wonderful, but I wear it regularly. I uh, Yeah. At 329. I think it's a, I think it's a smash. Like I said, my it's going to be the best-selling Islander of 2020 and probably 2021 as well. I mean, I we're still selling even though it was released, I don't know, six to nine months ago. 
mm. nine months ago or so, I'm still selling a couple of, a couple every day. Um, so wow. it continues, you know, the love continues on it. I, I, I totally get it. Uh, I'm just going to bring up the, the specs. Wow, that bezel is done Yeah, it's very, nice, very right? Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. And I have to say, um, you, you actually lent me. I, ah. I have it here. You actually lent me this. Yeah, yeah, the um, 21. I, I, I still haven't found time to review it, but it's okay. I, I'm glad you did because now I've I've got to experience it. Um, I can personally attest to to the quality, um, but I, I, incredible for the money. Uh, yeah. I, my only critique of this this is the the smaller one. The yeah, it's uh, the 38 millimeter. The 38 mm I wish it was. It is tubby. That's yes, my only is. critique. Yeah, but, once you um, include the dome with the crystal, yeah. But however, in terms of everything else, it's flawless. I mean, it's it's just beautifully done. Really, really beautifully done. Well, thank you. Yeah. So now, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's certified pure class. There we go. <laughs> 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 lots of stuff have hap- has happened. There's lots of stuff coming. Um, I'm just because you've you know, expanded into like you got oh you got. Uh, field have, watches now. You got wa- pilot I have the, watches. I have the, actually, it's funny because I'm right by where I film, so I have the 40 millimeter field watch. That just well, this is actually a prototype. The dial isn't exactly what you see here, um, but yeah, the field watches, the pilots' watches, um, dress watches. There's a 9015 dress watch coming out ah, within the next week or two or so. Nice, good man. Uh, I'm so happy for you, man. You deserve it because I you. mean, if if anybody knows uh mark uh you know that uh well this is why i've known you for since the beginning of my channel because you're so yeah. re- you are the definition of reputable oh, you know you, sir. <laughs> uh, if i had to give an example of how you sell watches it, it, there you go gracias number two number two sometimes this is above 500 dollars. okay right okay. and sometimes it's not and the reason is Another contentious, we'll get into that. Uh, it's the Glycine Combat Sub. Okay. Right. Glycine are best known for their Airman, which I've reviewed countless times. Sure. Uh, I owned the, the Combat Sub and I saw one recently because it was bought in 2016 by Invicta. And yes. this is where and yes, people where the, uh, lost their minds. Yeah. So, sorry, somebody's texting me. People lost their minds thinking, oh, it's over. But it, I, I, and I've seen before and after. It's exactly the same, made in it the, is same, the same same factory. Nothing changed. It's like, and I don't understand. If anything, it's strengthened the brand because, I, well, I know I understand the fear because the, they think that oh, it's going to become all huge watches. It's going to become right. in 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 the you buy it at the gas station type of right, you know, right, right. You right. know, not not the prestigious Swiss brand that it from nineteen. I think they found in 1914. Mm-hmm. Very long history. Yeah. So the Airman is their is their number is their um, their flagship. What they're most famous for. But in '67 they brought out the Combat uh, line. Originally okay. it was a, a field watch, and it's the okay. second oldest continually running line oh, really? of watches. Yeah. I did not know that. Then in about the 90s it kind of evolved into a diver. Right, came back in the present form. It's the only feature it really retains from the original 1967 is um, uh, the, the the military markings, mm-hmm. uh, the 24, like a field watch, yeah. and it's automatic. Got so it. they still use ETA in there, but because of this buy buyout or uh, takeover from Invicta, th- they used to be about twelve hundred, a thousand dollars. Now they're around five hundred. Right. So I mean. You know, sapphire glass, ETA, yeah. incredibly thin, eleven right. millimeters. Yes. You know, um, with real history, right? Right. made in Switzerland for five hundred so bucks. Yep. You know, can't beat it. So I'll, I'll talk, I'll talk to that if I may. Yeah, go being, on, go on. Being your industry insider. Yeah. It's they dropped in price simply because with a buy over by a company like Invicta, the whole. Um, not marketing aspect, but the whole sales aspect changes, and it more or less almost becomes direct to consumer as opposed to distributor, store, customer. Mm. Uh, mm. If you walk into a jewelry store, I'm sure the combat sub is still a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars or whatever. Mm. Um, but you can buy them online. As you know, and I don't think we said that. You know, 
certainly my last one is more than $500, but you can buy it online for less than 500. So that's, we're talking about street price. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, I'm not going to bash the brand, but this is what they're known for. They mass produce watches and then they just shoot them off to every distributor around the world. When I say distributor, now I'm talking, um, wholesalers, gray marketers, and then they wind up on the various websites. Um, the, Biggest one, I would say, would be like Drop. Drop has them like all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're picked up for major bargains. But as you said, the watch didn't change. The manufacturing of it didn't get cheaper. We've just, to use this horrible phrase that everyone on YouTube, you know, all these people on YouTube use and all these industry changers use, you cut out the middleman. You might, you might, even, cut, <laughs> right. you might even cut out two middlemen. Right. Um, and and people are selling them for less and less margin. Um, so you're getting the same quality product. You're just getting it for a lot less money. It's pretty much, it's seeing a, a, chain, a paradigm shift in, in the retail aspect. Well, there you have it. So that's my, that's my dump. <laughs> there, I'm so happy I, we had this conversation. Because, well, because people it, have said to me, Mark, why don't you sell glycine? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I'm not, I just can't. They're everywhere. They're at every gray market website. Um, like I said, they're on drop.com like almost daily. Um, right. I just, uh, I'm not buying a watch for $400 and selling it for $425. That's not the industry I'm in. Um, so, but yeah, that's kind of my. Well, I totally get it. And, and also, you, you're, you are an authorized dealer. So yes. you'd have to sell it for the yeah, retail. That's never going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Yeah. Uh, just all of it will collect dust. The one thing I will say about it is uh, it, it has been criticized as being a, a ripoff of the Submariner. And I, I honestly don't feel it is because mm -hmm. uh, having owned one, it feels completely like its own thing. Yes, I see the similarity. Sure. And obviously the name implies what it was intended for because the, the Airman that came out in 53 had yeah. this huge kind of following with the US Navy pilots. Uh, it was worn by Pete Conrad. In space they wanted to capitalize on that and it's 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 a basically a field watch diver right if you think about it like that sure it's 42 millimeters if they had a 38 or a 40 i would have it i'd yeah. have i'd be it'd still Got be it. in my collection right um but anyway yeah i'm good i'm really cool i'm so uh grateful to have your input on that because it totally makes sense yeah now. i'm all, i'm almost like yeah hey, i don't want to say anything and i'm like no hey, no no can't, can't hurt me <laughs> this is this is the this is what needs to be talked about needs to be said oh there's a bear i mean i could talk forever about the different you know i've done kind of videos on it in the past but you know just every step of the way man just adds more money mm. and it's kind of sad for the for the uh, you know for the um for the retailer but it's to the consumer's benefit okay yeah. you ready are okay. you warming up rocky yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually it's funny Joe. i've been i've been um have you shadow boxing? boxing really yeah uh oh I, actually i got a i got a bag number, number one. one i'm not gonna use my i'm not gonna use my middle finger because i know what that does no. here. <laughs> <laughs> uh so my number one is from orient okay it is the orient triton or neptune or maybe they're not even calling it anything anymore. Uh, Orient's gone through this whole thing of removing most of the names of the watches. Lord knows why, a whole other issue. So anyway, the I see you're looking it up. Yeah, this I is, reviewed this one, yeah. Oh, I did you? Yeah. Okay, so this is a 43 millimeter diver. It's got a power reserve, it's an automatic, power reserve meter, sapphire crystal, 200 meters of water resistance and it is not ISO certified. This is the only other dive certified watch, but it's the mm. Japanese equivalent to ISO, the JIS standard it meets for dive watches. I think the retail, the real retail is like 685, 700. Mm. I sell them for 400. Uh, the only thing that might not be the greatest about the watch is the bracelet. Everything else about the watch is fantastic. The movement, I picked it because the movement they use in this watch is the same movement that was in their 300 meter saturation diver, which was a $2,000 retail watch. It is an extremely high end Orient movement. Now again, Orient obviously still makes all their movements in house in Japan. In house, yeah. Um, yeah, they mm. still have not like Seiko has farmed out you know, their movements to other countries. Um, Orient still does all their movements in, in house in Japan. Uh, I, I just feel like it's the whole package. Uh, it's a little bit of a large watch. I didn't know that. So, so, so really, if you want an affordable 
Japanese watch, truly Japanese watch. The movement is truly Japanese. Um, not all the watches are still made in Japan. Like the Rays and the uh, Makos, most of them are not. When you get into right. Orient Star, they are. Um, and I, I say on the website, which some of the Orients are still fully made and assembled in Japan. Mm. Um, but of course, they farm stuff out as well. Um, but all their movements are still in house. All their movements are still made in Japan. Um, and again, this watch, I think simply for the movement alone, uh, the movement is such a high end movement. Like I said, it used to be in the Saturation Diver, which was a 300 meter watch. Uh, for like retail was two grand, street price was like twelve hundred. Mm. Um, so for this to come in at four hundred, and with the power reserve meter comes in black, came in blue, well comes in black, blue, and a, and a, and a black and gold, which hey, I'm not, not a big fan of. Um, yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. The only diver I'm recommending with the power reserve, so love it. I remember the power reserve being quite divisive, but if you think about it as a diver. If you if you if think of it as a tool, to, sure, you to, want to know that it's that yeah. it's wound, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. I, I thought that was really kind of cool, but I understand that it does break the symmetry, and it does. It's kind of it's it's on and off angle or whatever. Yeah, but you know, I guess that's one of those polarizing things where people are like, well, I love that it's got the power reserve, or it's I it's I hate that it's got the power reserve, but I think yeah. more people love the inclusion of a power reserve meter, especially since. I would say, uh, at least in our in our area, more and more people are buying and owning automatic watches, uh, yeah. and it's good to know at a glance whether you know it's got a day left yeah. or it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, especially a day if left. you're down in the deep and and you're timing your dive, yeah. you, uh, you don't know when it's yep. it could, if and if it stopped working or something yeah, and mucks up your timing, it could be disastrous. It, yeah, it could be a problem. Um, yeah. Having said that, I, it's I can only. Because in the original pocket watches, when the the power reserve complication first happened, I'm talking hundred, mm -hmm. probably hundreds of years ago. Yeah, yeah. It was offset because they hadn't mastered miniaturizing the wheels to position it in terms of the the, the, mm -hmm. the architecture of the movement. So they, the, it was always offset, sure. and that kind of set a trend, a style trend that became for them all to be all to be offset. So is this offset right. as a nod to the past or is it just it's, i think it's strictly stylistic interesting strictly style yeah yeah because they Absolutely. can certainly do it now they can do whatever they want now they got watches where they put the power reserve on the back right <laughs> i mean they're not not in this price zone but there are some beautiful watches with the needles on the back it's totally awesome that's crazy interesting yeah um right what is my number one uh what is it well okay so when i when i was doing this list um and we, we were discussing this before we recorded. Yeah. Um, I I was going to say to you, let's only have one Seiko in the list, because right, you didn't hit it. You didn't hit a Seiko yet. Well, well, because we could do a top ten of just Seikos. Sure. You know. Yeah. However, I'm willing to to uh, disregard that rule to have two Seikos because I just I just can't do this list. Oh, you have a Seiko, yeah, I have a Seiko. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. you didn't do a Seiko yet. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, sure, now. I, I'm going to go for the, the, the Seiko Mini Turtle. Really? Yeah. And, huh. and the reason is because, um, and this was difficult because I almost went for the Samurai. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it looks like a feudal castle in japan you know these edges yeah. and blah 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 yep but what the samurai does not have that the turtle does is a real lineage a real like uh, i love the samurai but it's it's technically it's a new watch it's a new watch yeah yeah they have hands from here and bits and bobs from there but it's it feels new it's a it's right the turtle really goes back all the way to the dawn of of divers for seiko yeah. um sure. I, I like the the mini one because the the case is is obviously smaller, but it works so well with um, different size wrists. You got that yeah. the the, uh, the four R thirty five in there, which is great movement, super comfortable, mm -hmm. two hundred meters water resistant. You got that killer Lumi Bright, which is just fantastic. ISO certified. I, oh oh, it is nice, nice, nice. The turtle history. I mean, uh, Mick Jagger wore the sixty three oh nine, which is what the one of mm -hmm. the, if not the first one yeah. or the early one. Um, and it's also in the. Have you ever seen the movie the uh, the Abyss? 
by James Cameron. Yes. You have. Yes, I, 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 I saw it once, so don't ask me about right. a specific scene, but that is actually one of the movies without a, a Muppet in it that I have seen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Harris wears a, a, mm-hmm. a Seiko Turtle. Does he really? Yeah, and it's oh. you really do see it. It's very prominent in the film. Okay. Um, and it's no accident because um, Cameron famously is a was a Seiko guy before yeah. before becoming a, a Rolex. Uh, a Rolex guy. Yeah, yeah Rolex. that's what happens when you produce a lot of good movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. He actually wore the Arnie, which was. I'm surprised oh, did he really? didn't put an Arnie in here. We didn't I do an Arnie in another video? Did you? Mink, I think maybe I don't know. I can't, I can't know. remember. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. The mini turtle has style, little style cues. It's very subtle sure. from almost every single great. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, um, the, the, some of the case shape uh, is from the. Um, the Captain Willard, but then of the course Willard, yeah. they've put the crown at three, unlike the Willard. So, and then you've right. got hands like the SKX. You have got the dial from this. Da, da, ba, 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 yes. ba, ba. So you've got everything in of. And what's the size? Uh, it's forty-two. But okay. I reviewed one. I actually bought it. I bought the blue, which the blue is the SRPC thirty-nine. It is. It is. I remember. Right. Right. I know that number. I, I have that number. to look at my notes, but you, you yeah. can. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's 35 was black, 39 was blue. Yeah. That's right. And then there was the 41, which is the Paddy Pepsi. Paddy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only the only um, kind of Marmite thing it had. Um, check back to last week's video. For I di- see. I know yeah. what Marmite is yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the Cyclops? I mm-hmm. I don't know why that that came out from nowhere. Why they put a cyclops on it it's, it's not a bad cyclops it's one of the round ones which i like yeah you know i don't they mind did the it. same thing with the new monsters they did the same thing they put a candy bar over the day date right yeah it's it's bizarre why they they chose to do that i still don't really get it but i guess was it purely function or i'm sure it is yeah it must be maybe the people who designed them are getting old right <laughs> <laughs> right right okay that's it that's well, that's a good it's a good number one choice i dig it thank you thank you well your choices were fantastic because it really complements mine i don't i don't think we had much overlap aside from seiko no seiko that was it yeah guys do add your uh nominations in the comments below what do you think is the best uh dive watch under 500 dollars please do share that a massive thank you once again to mark um he's also generously sponsored this video uh, which is fantastic it really helps the channel um and also next for for next month is um suggestions uh, lists yes. price price areas to investigate maybe we should do field watches or or chronographs sure i don't know let people let, yeah let, let the people talk yeah let the people talk i like that i like that so Please do uh, share that down below. Right, don't forget to add uh, your likes. Um, what, what do people usually say? I, I, like, I haven't done this a million times. I've... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you could do you. You have your thing. Yeah, do it. All right. Uh, don't forget <laughs> to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, found it useful. And as always, we will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao. Thank you. Bye bye.